All right, today Mark is here with us because we are teaching practical board repair school this week. Super excited because after the students go home, it's time for Mark and I to play. And we are working on the iPhone 10Q today. Now Mark has a case in front of him that has no touch. Now no touch in the iPhone 10 is one of the really common problems. And I was all excited to do a stream where I was going to show Mark my special method, which I think you already know. Uh, my special method for how we can uh, fix all of the pulled pads on the iPhone 10 split board. But that didn't work out because this case here doesn't have the classic presentation. It's got something weird. So Mark, tell us where this, what's the history of this phone? Uh, this is used as a tester for someone who refurbishes screens. So it just sits on a desk and after they put new glass on the screen, they test it with this phone. So this one doesn't get the common flexion damage that's going to bend that board and split it. Yeah, it, it just never gets sits put on in a desk. Pocket. Nobody walks around in their pocket. Nobody surfs on it or even checks Reddit. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, but uh, we so we did rule number one, and we have determined that it absolutely has no touch with our known good screen battery and dock. And then we went ahead to go go look for diode mode in the connector. Now diode mode in the connector, we just did it and we did find a problem. It can be tough to do those diode mode in the connector because where's the, what's the known good reading? So for you guys that are new to the channel, diode mode is one of our uh, common techniques that we use to kind of figure out what lines are short or open that are related to a process. So one thing I want to show you guys, if you are working on iPhone 10 stuff, is what's the known good values? What are these resistances that are supposed to be there? So I want to show you guys this, uh, this little part of iPad Rehab Forum. So iPad Rehab Forum is where stuff like this goes. So iPad Rehab Forum, let's click to the forum. Now the forum is, is we designed it for people that can't get to the course that want us to kind of hold their hand a little bit and walk them through a repair that they're struggling with. So we have a subscription for this, but of course there's a free section. Everybody likes free. So here at It Takes a Village, this is always gonna be free. This is where you can kind of contribute to the knowledge base. And I've got some really exciting ideas for how we can kind of all work together to do experiments and to do research. So over here in It Takes a Village, there's some awesome posts and one of them, I've been to this one a lot. This is from Squid Billy, who sat down and took a normal iPhone 10 and figured out all these diode mode readings and he posted it. Here it is, the iPhone 10 diode mode map. So this is fantastic and I, I use this all the time. So we just used this a few minutes ago to determine for the J5800 digitizer connector, what line was short or open. And we found one. What was it, Mark, remember? Uh, it was racer to AOP int con L. Yes, so pin six, this racer to AOP. Now racer is one of the, I think it's the touch chip on the screen. So it's not in the schematic. And AOP is the CPU. And this is going to be one of the simple signals that's either a one or a zero, where the signal is when this line is pulled low down to the zero. So this line is supposed to have a diode mode voltage drop, which is our way to infer the resistance. And it's supposed to be about 0.4. And what was the result? 0 0.016. So why don't you show us that real quick with the multimeter so we can keep things on the up and up. I recently told the, my channel about Jeff's story about doing his first pelvic exam in medical school where he's trying to make small talk just to keep up a banner and he's like so now i'm gonna put gloves on you know just to keep things on the up and up <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then he was and then he was regretting that all right so let's get rid of the let's take this browser over here and can we see the um the can you shove the multimeter somewhere where we there can see? we go there we go all right perfect so let's have you just kind of like go down the row a little bit. So we're expecting to see, let's do that on that side, that first pin about 0.4. Yep, so we got point, point 4. 0.4. This is in diode mode, red probe point on four, ground. 0.4. Second pin. Second pin. Third pin. Burp. 
Zero six four. So here's our mismatch. We have a low reading. It's, going up it's supposed a little bit. to be. Oh, see. So <laughs> it's uh supposed to be point four, and uh, we kind of intentionally leave the units off because diode mode gets to be confusing. It's technically measuring a voltage drop, but we're using it to infer the relative resistance of the line. So point four is normal, and we're getting zero point zero six. That's low. So why is it low? Because there somewhere is a short to ground on the line. So the next step is research the line. What could be the possible sources of a short to ground? So Mark, what kinds of things can fail short? Um, capacitors. Capacitors, yes. Capacitors and chips. Chips right. and caps. And that's pretty much it. Chips, caps, or something unusual. So let's click open to ZXW and check out this line. So we're gonna click over to ZXW. You'll have to read chat and see if we we see anything. Uh, All right, let's see. Is it good or bad that they don't have on slow chat? I don't know what slow chat is. What is slow chat? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. All right, so um. we are gonna, we will pay attention to chat, but we wanna, I want to get Mark busy here a little bit. All right, so we're looking here on ZXW. Oh, Ray and uh, and Yusuf are both in the chat. Great, <laughs> fantastic. We'll uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so this was the these guys were learning all about diode mode today. All right, so this is the shorted line here. This racer to AOP int con L line. And we can see that the line is pretty brief. It goes from the connector. There's a little cap on the line, so there's a possible cause of a short. And then it goes from the cap through a filter. So here's the filter. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it goes from the bottom board up to the interposer board. And then it travels along the interposer board and it pops out on the top board. So it goes from the bottom board to the top board, and now on the top board, it goes straight to, you guessed it, the CPU. So this line just goes CPU, interposer board, filter, cap, connector. So there's really only two possibilities of where we could have a short, and what are those? Uh, in the CPU? In the or, CPU? Or that cap. Or that cap. All right. Now, next step, visual exam. So in visual exam, throw it under the microscope, Mark, and it let's take a look. All right. So let's get rid of side cam. All right. Show us so we can see. Uh, All right. There we so go. which pin is the shorted one? Uh, the shorted pin is this guy here. Okay. So that is, is coming up short. And I see a big glaring missing spot. What's that? That is where somebody who looked at this before me thought, well, maybe it's just this cap. So that's the cap that's on this line. Yeah. So somebody who sent this knew enough to go, huh, didn't have touch. I better diode mode in the connector. Bloop, 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 bloop. Short. Hmm. Look at the line. There's only two places, CPU or this cap. They remove the cap to mm -hmm. make it be just within the CPU. So these guys already know, yes, things got a short within the CPU. Mm -hmm. We'll send it to, send it up to Mark and Jessa. <laughs> they'll, they'll, I don't know what. So now if you, if let's talk about that. So if, if indeed this short is within the CPU, CPU is unique. There is no iPhone 10 without a functioning CPU. Ken, is this a candidate for us to just transfer the CPU and other chips to a good board? Will that solve the problem? Um, I mean, if we want the other board to also still have no touch. <laughs> so there's, there's no like swap technique and I wanna make that really clear. The problem with these boards that the likelihood is that the short is not under the CPU. It's not within the balls of the CPU. It's in the die, the structure, the, the glass of the CPU itself. Now, how do you think it came to be like this? You know, I'm a big fan of how did it get to be like this? What do you think? Um, I think that a screen was messed up during refurbishing or they plugged in a 10S Max screen when they shouldn't have or 
something happened that has to do with testing screens on the phone. I think so as well, because what, what do we know about this kind of problem? I think the first time I saw something like this would have been the 6S, mm -hmm. where there was just, hey, there is a short within the CPU on the AP to LCM reset line. Mm -hmm. And that one came with a history of, yeah, I totally am, I will totally admit it. I just plugged an iPhone 6 screen into the 6S, mm -hmm. and then I realized mistake, now I put in a 6S screen and now it doesn't have any image in that case. Mm -hmm. and, when, and it turns out that um, the screen itself has some voltage that goes through the screen, in, from the connector, from the board, through the screen and back to the board. So if that's dumping out into a pin that goes to the CPU, that's not supposed to, that's how you can damage the CPU by plowing into it. Now the, what's gonna happen to the actual structure of that stuff is it's gonna stir the soup so do you think that this should we just throw it away and go drink a margarita no is, is there there's, any chance of fixing it there's one other possibility do that, tell that there maybe there is just a tiny little bit of corrosion at that interconnect board Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So it, it, we can't say for sure right now the CPU has an internal short because there is that tiny chance because the line roots from the connector up through the interposer board mm -hmm. and then it goes into the CPU. It's possible that there could be a little bit of corrosion. Somebody maybe pressed on the balls and mashed the ground ball to this or something like that. <laughs> something weird could happen. Now what's cool about the iPhone 10 board though is that we can split the two boards in half. So we can split apart the top board and the bottom board. And then the short is gonna be on one side or the other. I mean, we're gonna cut the board in half and the short will either be on the CPU side or it'll be down on the bottom board. Mm -hmm. In which case we can go after the corrosion. All right, so what do you think we should do next, chat? Let's see. Who thinks that we should split the board to kind of rule that out? Let's see. Uh, oh, there's Ray talking about, talking about Flux. Pop in and say hi. All right, so let's go ahead and split this board. Split the board, split the board, split it. All right, now how many times have you split an iPhone 10 board, Mark? Um, none, never, not once. Why is that? Do you have like a mean boss or something? <clears throat> um, yeah, so they, they, they don't ever make it down to Florida. Huh, huh, huh. Somebody's selfish, I guess. Okay, I, so it's today true. Today was the first time I've ever connected a screen to an iPhone 10 board. <laughs> so Mark does, Mark's uh, highly specialized for all of our Samsung and Android devices, and Jessa is highly specialized for the iPhone 10 stuff. But today, all that changes, and here we get to watch Mark amazing man Schaefer on screen live in front of the whole world oh geez <laughs> no pressure and All he right. is going to split his first iPhone 10 board let me give you some tips yeah All please right. do okay I will so number one we are gonna use this this device here so this is a special iPhone 10 preheater so next we're gonna turn it on so I will plug it in for you and I'll give you a pro tip this is the exact same preheater that the folks in China told me to stop using because it's dangerous. It says input should be 220 volt. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, so try not to touch that and ground at the same time. That's my pro tip. Okay. okay? So right. there you go on that. And now we're just going to kind of let it heat up. Is it already, it remembers it's, the right temperature? It remembers the right temperature. So it's gonna heat up a little bit. Now you can, next pro tip is is to cut, there's a, you know, make sure that sticker is, is that separate. Is cut. All right, so that's cut. So now your goal ultimately is to, is to separate, this is the top half. So this is the top board, that's coming off. Mm -hmm. And we do have a nozzle. Now this is gonna be a challenge for you, Mark. This is the iPhone 10 dedicated nozzle for the quick. However, at this station is just a JBC. It doesn't go on the JBC. Mm. So you can either go get a quick from right over there, and drag it over here and plug, find a plug. That's a challenge. 
to use this dedicated iPhone iPhone 10 nozzle. Look how perfect that is. Yeah. Or you can say, I'm a professional and just use the, the JBC. Yeah, I'm just going to use the JBC. Ah, okay. All right, <laughs> so he's going to use the JBC. And you're just going to apply some top heat. So what do you use uh, for the top heat? Um, that much or more? A little more, you know. I would use not as much as shields, a little, you know, a little bit more. I don't really think it matters. I'd probably use a bigger nozzle though. I'd, I'd take, I'd make that nozzle big, and then you're you're just gonna wave it around, and then you're gonna um, kind of just find a separation spot. So you can, you over here, this is all ground, so you really can't hurt anything over here. So okay. you can just kind of like get into that top layer. And then you'll just feel that looseness and flip it off. It's very straightforward, no problem. Okay, so I don't have to go all around the edges. No. Okay. You'll just get a get a looseness somewhere, and then, you know, one, two, three, flip it off. All right. All right. Here comes the amazing Mark Schaefer and his first ever iPhone 10 board split live, on stream. Uh, so this needs to warm up still, huh? That'll take too long, so just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jessa. It's a good thing, good thing I'm it's a, a good risk thing taker. This, it's a good thing this board's already almost certainly dead. Yeah. But we'll see. Let's see. Let's ask, let's see. What would chat do? Would chat wait for this board, for the preheater, to really get up to temperature? You know, it might take a long time because it's supposed to be on 220. No pressure, Mark, says Q's tech service. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Wait, is Alrighty. it Earth Day? It is Earth Day, yeah. Oh, that means it's my aunt's birthday. I need to call her. Hmm. Alrighty. Your speed is low. You, uh, you, you need to go way hotter than that. You're like, there's no need for caution. Go, go hot and heavy on this. I don't, I don't like, I don't like anything about this. Think of it as an EMMC chip that somebody told you you have to be like super gentle with it. And you're like, nah, it's exactly <laughs> like that. It's exactly like that. All right. Uh, C Stafford 14 wants to wish your aunt a happy birthday. All right. Ah, oh, CQ's tech service says just go to town with a JBC, more airflow. I would concur. I would be on the on the hunter. All right. Why are you fixing that board when you can just buy an iPhone 10R? That sounds low. You see, you need more heat and more air. It's a shield. It's almost done. Okay. More power. See, Stafford 14 says, she said my name. <laughs> There you go, Marky. Go, Mark, go! Get off. Wow, with the finger method. Wow, total <laughs> professional. That's the that's the pro way right there. All right, fantastic. All right, so now we're gonna knock off that. So we have turned off the turned off the heat and take off the bottom board. Now let's go on a hunt. Let's look for corrosion and let's find out where that short is. Is it on the CPU side, where it undoubtedly is? Uh, what got disconnected? <laughs> is it, <laughs> or is it on the interposer board side? It's a mystery. All right, let's find out. So you can go back to the same connector on that bottom board and see what the result is. We'll drill you out here so we can all see. All right. Diode mode says. Uh, where is a? These, these are ground, right? Hmm. The out row, the outer row of all of the interposer is ground. Okay, perfect. And you're on that third, third pin. I have. Open line. Open line, which is normal because there's nothing on that line. It's just a wire that goes from the interposer to the connector. There's 
no, so we've ruled out the chance, the slim chance that there was corrosion on the bottom of the interposer board where it connects to the bottom board. All right, so now you've got to figure out which, um, which one of these pins is your line, which I think it's it the 13th one from the, from the bottom. It's this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's all you. Now, for you guys that are in class, since everybody's watching the stream, and we were talking about that elephant skin oxidized pads, great example right here. Yeah, it's that one right there. All right, so Mark is doing diode mode here on the CPU side, and survey says... 0 0.06. 0 0.06. So the short is on the CPU side. So Oof. now... Hit, hit off on the JVC. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we have confirmation. So let's go ahead and review that on ZXW. Now we have ruled out any other possibility. We know that there is a short here at the CPU because there is a short that we can measure at this pin, and it only goes to the CPU. So as expected, given the history, how did it come to be this way? This is somebody plugging in the wrong screen into this tester phone mm -hmm. and causing sending an inappropriate voltage into that cpu and it ping damaged that spot and that is a big drag because now it is held in the low position it's short to ground so it's always a zero and that means that we don't have touch so we can throw this board away now right <laughs> yeah let's just throw it away <laughs> or what's the other plan what's plan b uh 20 volts to the cpu okay so here's the thing <laughs> let's think about how a sh how a cpu becomes short and what is a short so a short is a connection to ground an inappropriate connection to ground so let's consider this what if within that die of the cpu the actual connection to ground is just a whisker a feather like tiny bit of a blowout of the main trace on that line that's now just a feather of it is just touching barely touching ground then that would be a, such a thin connection that if we applied a voltage to that circuit it would have a really high resistance just like trying to drink a milkshake through a thin straw it would have a really high resistance that would be the spot that would get really hot maybe even hot enough to melt or even burn whatever is the thing that's offending and creating that connection. So there is some sort of small minuscule chance, not zero, that we might be able to actually inject a voltage into that shorted line and burn the short out of the CPU. Maybe in the very, maybe it wouldn't return to normal. Maybe if we could burn it out, it would at least return to not being short, so not being in the zero position. So maybe that the device would be sort of somewhat, get some function back, because maybe if that line is just at its normal one, then maybe it would work, I don't know. Let's try it. What do you guys think, chat? Anybody have any better ideas? Because I'm thinking we should inject voltage into the line into the CPU and see if we can burn out this short. So let's see what you guys think. Mark, set it up. Oh, it's ready. Oh, it's ready. Okay, so we're gonna have letting the magic smoke out to fix something crazy talk, says Tim. <laughs> okay, let's smoke it. 1.21 gigawatts. All right, let's see. Uh, now this stream title makes sense. How did that happen? Um, I said maybe 14 times in nine seconds. Yes! Okay, so really there is there is no other option with this board. We've really ruled out any other repairable possibility. We know what the problem is. This board has no touch because there is a short to ground within the CPU. We're sure of that. The CPU is required, you can't replace the CPU. We can't transfer the CPU to some other board because it's the CPU itself is the problem. So this is what we're left with. So Mark, what do you, tell us, walk us through what you've set up here. Uh, I have connected a wire to um, what well, is... Z let's go to ZXW. Okay. I've connected a wire to probably that pad that is on the interconnect 
Oh, on the you connected it. You didn't connect <laughs> no. it here on the test. No, because we got two halves of the board now. That's the oh, that's on the, the bottom, bottom board. Yeah, yeah, that's gone. That ship has sailed. So we're just uh, straight up top half of the board. Just so you soldered a wire there on that spot. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> now we could put it in the jig and then use the test point, but yeah. okay, fine. All right, so you soldered a wire to to that spot. Can we uh -huh. see it? I want to see it, man. I want to see the wire. Okay. Because I see that you've already connected it to DC power. I see that it is under power right this second. I have. All right, um, so let's see. Show me, show, show us. All right, so that is, that looks pretty good. So you've yeah. soldered a wire onto that pad. Yep. And you are, you have, gra you've got this board connected to ground with an alligator clamp. Yep. And it's connected to DC power, and you have DC power at 1.7 volts, which is what this line would normally expect. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's short to ground, and we see that it is consuming current how much? 40 milliamps. 40 milliamps, which is not very much. You're so not going to burn much with that. So what should we do? We should crank up the juice. Crank up the juice. Raise the roof. All right. So what? So go ahead. Turn it up. So we're going to turn it up. One point. Ooh, three volts. <gasps> three, three volts. And I wish that we could turn the camera on this. Mark has turned the voltage up to three volts. And guess what happened? <laughs> Did the current go up or down? Uh, it went up for just a second, and then it went down. It went up for just a second, and then it went down. Yep. And now if I turn it back to 1.7. <gasps> now if he puts it back, he went up to 3, and the current went up, and then it went down. I really wish you could see this. I know. So dumb. <laughs> stupid, stupid. We've got to so we've got to get an on-screen DC power supply. It went up, it went down, and right now, right now as we speak, it is back to 1.7 volts and no milliamps all right get your multimeter out marky mark let's see if you have actually gotten any resistance out of this line so let's see now we can't hold on a minute wait a minute let me get you back on on so we can see your multimeter all right here we go is it still short <gasps> oh my god it's not <laughs> short <laughs> Look at that! All right. Yay! That is pretty cool! That is pretty cool! Look at that! It, it, right now, it looks like we have burned the short and back to normal resistance, which is super awesome. So next step, Mark, just reball that sucker back together. Uh, okay. Or we'll test for touch. So okay, yeah. Let's test for touch in the jig. Mark, how surprised are you? I'm, I'm I shocked. remember you saying things like, I don't think that we should do this on a live stream. No, oh, that doesn't go <laughs> like that. Here you go. And I said, oh, it'll be awesome. But it was your idea. All right, let's go ahead. Yep, um, stick it in there. Here, let's do another stream called, let's watch Mark struggle to use the eye <laughs> socket for the very first time. What the hell? It goes on, the bottom board goes in there. The, what, do these go through the? Yes. Mm -hmm. But they're too far apart. Or are they? Or are they perfectly oh. spaced? All right, you might have a pro. You probably do. Stop. You have a problem with oxidation on your pads, so you oh, should yeah. tin over those. Yeah. And my yeah. recommendation is to dip the iron in the iPhone 10 low melt solder. What do you guys think, Chad? I want to see what Chad thinks. Pretty sweet, huh? Burning a short out of the CPU. Matt Brophy wanted to see 20 votes in smoke, so he says. Meh. Very cool. Thanks for the idea. Glorious even, says Got Steam. Apple chips are like real chips. Only fried ones are the good ones. All right. <laughs> Lewis shows the vaults and arms on screen. <laughs> well, then I guess you should click over to Rossman's, uh, Lewis Rossman's repair channel. You know what Lewis doesn't do? Doesn't fix iPhone 10s. Yeah, Lewis doesn't fix iPhone 10s. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mark now has officially more experience with iPhone 10s. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Wait, came... that's, it's not fair to say this is the first. I did fix one, one time. You did? Yeah. When? Uh, Get busy. We got to wrap it up. Months ago, but it was uh, uh, NAND cap. I see. So Q's tech service says that he 
saw the good old D12 iPad, uh, the, the SD RAM pad. That's very common, actually, if it's the first time that the sign of it being broken record button being red. Broken record button. That's a pretty common fault, though, um, that uh, D12 pad. I think the last one that I did had, had that problem as well. We've seen a few other reports that are out there. Love brute strength repair. All right, yes, let's all go to the Apple support community forum and ask them if it's possible to burn a short out of a CPU. Uh, <laughs> I do think that it is pretty cool that uh, it, was, it was not a full short to ground. So that was kind of the clue that this, this had a good, a, a reasonable chance to work. So what Mark's doing right now is he's gonna tin over the pads on the two boards so that they can make good connection in the jig and then we're going to test it for touch. I think it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Definitely way more fun to to do on a live stream than it is to do on a recorded video, but we got to speed it up. All right, forgot to yell clear before you jumped his jumped his little heart. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, wait to so I'll be surprised if the CPU still works as Agent 24, the doubter. Never came across the D12 pad. Yep. All right. Hurry up, Mark. Gotta get this. Right. Gotta get this oh, done. Oh, no. All what right. Done. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've gotten that hole full of solder. Oh, what a noob. All right, let's uh, give you some break. We're, now you're making me use braid on stream. God, Mark, <laughs> what's, what's happening to this channel? I learned it from Lewis. Oh, God, you've spent too much time down there. A... Lewis makes me braid everything. He better not. Do you yeah. actually braid when you go to Lewis's? No, he, if he sees me doing anything and not without braid in my hand, he, I get yelled at. Mm. Threatened to get stuck in the basement. Mm. That's bad. All right, so then we'll just watch Mark going over, going over these pads. All right, I'm just gonna, gonna try to go go, go on over them. There you go. I think it's a good lesson in how quickly oxidation can happen. So those pads, see how dull and gray they are? Those are not likely to be able to make even a good electrical connection in the jig with the little pin. Oh boy, there was a there was a pad missing there. It's an iPhone 10. It's, I think it only comes with like 60% of its pads. <laughs> The others are, are just fake pets. It's a myth. Fake news. Alrighty. Let's see. Is there a way to replace the home button and still replain, retain touch ID? I haven't looked in a long time. Has anything ever changed? Uh, there's a lot of people that do um, surgery on those. We don't do that. But there are some helpful little button replacers if you have a torn button but you can't replace the home button, no. You can repair torn home button flexes, although we don't do that. So you don't use Paul Daniels magical software. Mm, does he have magical software for iPhones? We use ZXW and have for years and love it. So that needs to go all the way down, Mark. So let's, all right, stick it back down here so we uh, can see. Probably need to not have screws just hanging around in between the halves. Okay, so we want to see you, so put it up so we oh. can see. There, great. Uh. All right, another pro tip. There we go. Got it in there? It's in there. All right, another pro tip is before you snap it in, to go ahead and put the screen the screen on. Oh boy, but I, got, I got a pro tip for you. <laughs> After you've used paste, wipe the excess off of your work area. That's not, I didn't use any paste today. All right, grab that. Excellent, all right, doc doc, doc doc goose. I, I have a know. pro tip. My uh, my computer guy should fix the USB. <laughs> you the, got a computer the guy? Apart. Yeah, it's either it's kind of a hybrid between you and Lewis. Lewis <laughs> built that computer, and you were the last person that had to do anything to it. All right, let's see. Oh, Jesus, get in there. There we go. All right, now that's the hard one. So so take your time. 
Alrighty, let's see. Uh, Canada Jessa, thanks for the response about some kind of IMAP repair. Hmm. You need the .brd files for Paul Daniels software, don't you? For iPhones? Does he, I, I don't. I, I don't. don't know I don't think he has some for that. iPhones. Yeah, I don't think his, his thing does that. All right. The phone does, did do that. Does this actually connect? It does. If you need some assistance, I'll be happy to help. That's why it's easier to connect that before you put on the top board. Because with the jig, it needs to almost slightly tuck under there. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. There we go. And it's it's difficult, which is annoying. Which is yeah. why without that flex cable, the extender, it's really, oh, yeah. really difficult. Which is why I just stocked some for sale on iPad Rehab Supply. All right, let's see. Just do it and burn the short. Uh, we, we already did burn the short, bro. Rewind. Okay. And now for the next feat, we will watch this board not have touch, and then we will give up because it's super late and we've been here all day. <laughs> okay. The beauty of... Why is there smoke coming out of it, Mark? Just kidding. All right, let me see. Let's... I don't think it's plugged in anymore. Not be. Yeah, so this is not plugged in anymore. Yay. Because I needed the plug over here. So let's just <laughs> locate that <laughs> right here. Wow. What? <laughs> Very organized. Place for everything and everything in its place. That's exactly right. That's my motto. Every place is for everything <laughs> and everything is in every place. All right. So now we're going to see, will it boot? Well, it still shows an image, so that's good. Yeah, things are things are going great. All right, let's see. Will it have touch? All right. Just saw Mark die a little on the smoke comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will it have touch? Now, so I will give you another pro tip. Sometimes they freak you out a little bit because they pause and then touch work. All right, here we go. Ah. Oh! They don't pause that much, though. Uh, your screen's junk. That's what it is. <laughs> Wait, is it my is it green lines? My beautiful green lines? Nope, nothing. All right, looks looks like a looks like we didn't get touchback. Um, go back to the. Let me let me do this. Let me check slide, and I'm gonna check on whether or not we have any kind of rule number one thing going on over here. So let's just edit this. Edit, edit, edit. Make sure that we have a perfect chance for touch. One thing that you can do is um, get a known good bottom board, mm -hmm. which we could definitely try. All right, let me look at this. All right, let's just glance under the microscope very quickly and look for any kind of a little connection problem. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> something in this setup is wigging up. <laughs> is it this? My God. What? You have no, uh, looks like we have no mic up there. Hmm? We got a mic. Okay. Right. It's totally professional. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, so we've got some. Let's kind of make this totally fine. So how how finicky is the uh, jig? The jig is finicky. Yeah. The jig is finicky, but it is really great. But things like dried flux and stuff can give it a hard time. Now this is the sort of touch central side over here. Mm. Yeah, we've got a lot of you know kind of unevenness on this. Well, I wasn't given clear instructions. I know it's uh, <laughs> it's really tough. All right. But I, I don't think that any of that should have made that not work. All right, let's do a quick diode mode test with my multimeter. So we're going to diode mode here. 
in the connector on pin three. All right, so there's oh well, as is typical. We're, I'm, we're we got to finish up here. We can get out of here. We got to get to bed. Oh God, it's after ten. It is. It's time to to turn in. This is what happened when Jessa says, "Okay, so we're gonna start." We're just gonna do a eight. quick. We're gonna do a ten-minute stream. Yeah, <laughs> eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Ten-minute stream. Oh, bro. You got a missing pad there. Well, I mentioned a missing pad. Well, you didn't mention it was that missing pad. That's a touch pad. Oh, sweet. So that means everything works. That means you're going to have to fix that. All right. I can do that. Pretty sure it's a touch pad, but let's see. We're going to do that tomorrow, right? Uh, mm, see, now if this was an edited video... <laughs> sure, we'll do it tomorrow and then be nice and easy or whenever, Friday, doesn't matter. Okay. This is, this one we can't just ignore, so we need to look it up. This one is sort of in the flexion based row. So let's see. I'm not, I don't really know him for sure. All right, so now we got to look up that that missing pad in that position there by the PMIC. Let's go to ZXW and let's look it up. Speaker amp, not not important. Screw yeah. speaker amp. All right, so carrying on. All right, let's do a quick little jig job. Okay, so touch is kind of heavily impacted here by the bottom board interacting with the top board. So let's get this and this. You might want to grab a new one of these because I don't think I have confirmed. I haven't confirmed working touch with this for a while. Mm -hmm. For our rule number one, all right. We're assembling the sandwich in the jig. All right, now I kind of really want to know what the diode mode reading is right this second, but I think it's got a good chance of being okay. All right. Let's move everything up here so that we can all see. And let's boot. And see what's up. All right, so we have an Apple logo. And what about the missing cap? What about the missing cap? All right, let's see. Uh, bondage wires. <laughs> Drum roll, again, yes, let's see. So we are gonna see whether or not it has touch. If it doesn't have touch, then for me, it's time to go and my stopping point is just gonna be in the jig to check on any, uh, to check the digitizer connector to see if I can see any problem. All right, let's give it a chance. Does touch work? Not right now. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> the real drag, though, is the burning out of the short. You can burn out the short, but did you... And you can now have no short and no open, but you also have no function. Mm -hmm. so now and I that's the real drag. The, uh, now I wonder if voltage... Injecting the voltage would uh, do something. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, it has definitely cured some of the successes before. All right, let's do one last thing of just kind of checking here. Um, we're going to quickly diode mode in the connector here in the jig to see if we have anything that is kind of just not making connection. So let's take a look. Microscope, and I'm going to use my multimeter here, and I'll just yell out what these are. All right, so we have red probe on ground, diode mode. And let's kind of go down this dog. 
0.4 is normal. 0.4 is normal. This is our line. One, ah, 0.175. So normal is 0.4, and it's 0.175. That's that's significantly low. That's 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 low enough that it's going to be in a state where it needs to go from a one is 1.8 volts and a zero is zero mm -hmm. and having it have a partial short. It's got like half its normal resistance. That's going to make it really hard for it to go high enough to reset itself as I'm um, high 1.8. So we need a way to pull that up within the CPU. We could try to burn out the rest of the short. So we're, we're not. All right, but for now, I think we're gonna be done with this. So here's a recap of what we learned. This is an iPhone 10, and this iPhone 10, this iPhone 10 has a history of being a tester phone. So it is a testing LCDs uh, board. And it has come to us with a short circuit within the CPU. That's pretty much throw it away, right? Because the CPU is unique to the device. You can't replace it. You can't just lift it up and swap it to another board because the problem is within the chip. So you don't really have very many options when the iPhone 10 needs that CPU to work. So our theory was what if the short is caused from plugging in the wrong screen and sending an inappropriate voltage into the CPU. Maybe that caused something to expand and heat up and now be touching ground in an inappropriate way. So is it possible to actually burn that apart? Because it would be such a thin hair-like connection that would likely have really high resistance and get really hot. So that's what we tried to do and guess what? It worked. Because initially, when we injected a voltage into that line, we saw that there was current consumption, a short to ground. We raised the voltage and we saw a spike and then a drop to zero of that, that current. Fantastic. And so we, we decided to test. Test, the board doesn't have touch. However, it seems like we have, we have cured the full short which had an original resistance of 0.064 diode mode units. And now that has improved to 0.175. Now normal is 0.44. So we're not quite all the way back to normal yet. So we could continue to beat on this and continue to say, what if we try it again? And see if we could bring that line all the way back up to the normal resistance to ground, which I'd probably switch over and measure in ohms right now. But that's going to take a long time and it's 10 and we just thought that this would be a fun little stream and it was super fun to see that yes you actually can inject it you can actually solve the same the problem that you caused with the exact same thing so the problem was caused <laughs> by sending an inappropriate voltage into the cpu with attaching the wrong screen and we're trying to solve it by doing the exact same thing which i think is a cool little thing it is possible in our experience to sometimes have success being able to burn out a short in the cpu but you know you got to be careful with it and if you're in a case like this where throw the phone away either way it certainly is fun to try so i hope that you guys had fun with us trying to burn a short out we did burn the short out just not all the way yet i'll come back and update you guys if we uh, revisit this and we get touch working and you know we might we'll definitely we'll definitely keep working on it uh, offline and keep you guys updated that's it for now <laughs>